I've covered the times on my channel that musical guests were banned from Saturday Night Live, including Frank Zappa, The Replacements, Fear, and several others. The links to those videos are down below. But today I want to talk about the time that the Red Hot Chili Peppers appeared on the show, and it wouldn't result in the group being banned, but rather it offered a snapshot of the band struggling with each other. Stay tuned for the full story. Jean Frusciante would be the longest serving guitarist in the band, having three separate stints with the Chili Peppers, with the first happening from 1988 to 1992, 1998 to 2009, and more recently 2019 until present day. By the late 80s, the Chili Peppers had already gone through several guitarists, including Jack Sherman and Halal Slovak. Side note guys, I've done a whole video on the life and death of Halal Slovak, the link is down below. Following the death of Slovak in 1988, Frusciante would join the group and his musical background differed greatly from his bandmates, with bassist Flea recalling in the book Fornication, the Red Hot Chili Pepper story, John was a really talented, knowledgeable musician. He knows all the shit I don't know. I basically know nothing about music theory, and he studied it to death inside and out. He's a very disciplined musician. All he cares about are his guitars and his cigarettes, he'd recall. In 1991, Red Hot Chili Peppers would release their fifth and breakthrough album, Blood Sugar Sex Magic, would establish the band as one of the biggest groups in the world, but the new success also brought challenges, namely insecurity, infighting, and drug addiction. Frontman Anthony Kiedis would write in his 2004 autobiography, Scar Tissue, about Frusciante's headspace at the time, recalling, John would say, we're too popular. I don't need to be at this level of success. I would just be proud to be playing this music in clubs like you guys were doing two years ago. And it was that attitude that also showed up during the band's live gigs, with drummer Chad Smith telling VH1's Behind the Music, John was just up there like he didn't give an F about anything, and you can't be in a band and not care, and it's going to show, and it did. A lot of the shows were terrible. In February of 1992, the band was invited to perform as a musical guest on Saturday Night Live with host Tom Arnold and Roseanne. Also making a special guest appearance that night was Madonna. John, for his part, was in a terrible mood that weekend and almost came to blows with a crew member. He was upset that Madonna ignored him and spent little time with the band off stage. The Chili Peppers were scheduled to play two songs that night, including Stone Cold Bush from their previous record Mother's Milk, which went off mostly without incident, except for one moment when you can see Kiedis kick John during the song. The group's second song of the night from their new album at the time, Under the Bridge, didn't go as smoothly. Perhaps Frusciante was upset about the kick, or just his general relationship with the band, or just him being unhappy. By this point in time, Kiedis and Frusciante's relationship was pretty strained. They were barely getting along with the frontman remembering in his book, things deteriorated to the point where John and I didn't talk on the bus, and if we ran into each other in passing, we wouldn't even acknowledge each other. Getting back to the band's performance on SNL. For Under the Bridge, Kiedis relies on Frusciante to cue him in, and Kiedis would recall in his book what happened that night as he was waiting for the guitarist to bring him in, saying, I had no idea what song he was playing or what key he was in. He looked like he was in a different world. We were on live TV in front of millions of people, and it was torture. I started to sing in what I thought was the key, even if it wasn't the key he was playing in. I felt like I was getting stabbed in the back and hung up to dry in front of all of America while this guy was off in a corner in the shadow, playing some dissonant, out-of-tune experiment. I thought he was doing that on purpose just to F with me. Towards the end of the song, Frusciante typically provides backing vocals, but during their appearance on SNL, he let out a piercing howl. The performance set up Under the Bridge to be released as the album's second single in March of 1992, and it would end up going platinum. Frusciante would stay with the band until May of 1992 before leaving the group following a performance in Japan. He would look back at that time in 1994 saying, it was just impossible for me to stay in the band any longer. It had come to the point where even though they wanted me in the band, it felt like I was forced out of the band. Not by any members in particular or management in particular, but just the direction it was going. Following his departure, Frusciante would spend nearly half a decade in the throes of heroin addiction before getting clean and rejoining the group in 1998. The band, for their part, would reappear on Saturday Night Live in May of 2006 with Frusciante when promoting their record Stadium Arcadia. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. We'll see you again at Rock and Roll True Stories.